Good morning, good afternoon, and if you're watching this late at night, good evening. In this video, we are going to look at how to make a works cited page following MLA 8. We'll also throw in a few tips on how to do research. On the screen, we have an example of a works cited, and we can see that the title of the works cited is works cited. Notice that the title is not underlined or bold. And also we've got the name, Homer Simpson, a date, and possibly a block or grade if you need that information for your teacher. Then below that we have a hanging indent. Everything is double spaced. And it's in alphabetical order. Now let's start that from scratch. Here is a blank document. Here are some instructions on Bibliography, MLA 8 style, which is titled Works Cited. Now, it shouldn't be bold, underlined, or all caps. Here it's just emphasized so that you know that the title should actually be Works Cited, not Bibliography. APA uses the title References. Okay, so notice over here we've got step zero, read the instructions. That's a really good step to start with. Now specifically, if you're working on this in a computer lab, in the learning commons, at home, it'll be a little bit different. But if you're working in the learning commons, one tip is to find a PC computer specifically and not a Mac. The Macs are a little trickier to do this on. Also, uh, sign in to uh, the school computer, of course. Sign in with your account. Don't bypass that step. If you're having trouble with that step, find a solution to that step. Talk to your teacher make sure you can sign into your school district account. Then you're going to want to open Microsoft Office. Now, the desktop downloaded app version is the best, easiest way to do this. Avoid using the online version for this specific task. If you have to do the online version, it's a, just a little bit harder. But what's really hard is Google Slides with this particular task. Google Slides is a wonderful thing for many things, or Google Docs. However, for this task, it's really hard to get the hanging indents correct. OK. Next step, after you get through step zero, is step one. Open Microsoft Word in order to create your bibliography. Put your first and last name in the top right corner, top right or left, followed by block section and today's date. So over here, I'm typing in a name. I'll use the character Lisa Simpson. Then I'm going to add the date. Let's go with October 26. Two thousand and twenty, and we'll go with we're in block. Uh, let's go with block E, just to be really confusing. And then we'll add oh grade ten, let's say. All right, now we're ready for our title work cited. Okay, so we can see we've got this information on the screen here, and now we're going to do some quick formatting of it. All right, so. I'm going to actually going to make one extra spot there for my formatting. I'm going to go to home. Now, this little marker here is just this button here to turn on and on the markers. I'm going to select them all so I know I have them all selected. Now I can turn them off so they don't distract you. And then I'm going to first of all I'm going to fix the the font at Times New Roman and 12 point font. That's what I want there. Then I'm going to go check the paragraph spot here. And I'm going to go down here and make that uh, zero. I'm going to go over here to line spacing, and we're going to make this double spaced. OK, so this is double spaced. This is zero. This is zero. And then I'm going to go up here to where it says special, and I'm not going to do anything there yet. That's where I'm going to do my hanging. Now I've got this here, uh, double spaced and at times new Roman. Then I'm going to go over here. And I'm just going to add a few more markers before I go over here to center my title. OK. Get back to the step of reading the instructions. Step zero is to read the instructions. So let's go take a look at the instructions again. Step zero. Step one. Step two. Try using Oregon School Library Citation Maker. OK, so let's take a look. 
Now I've put in Oregon School Library Citation Maker into Google. And now that it's there, we can select it and move towards. This is what Oregon School a Library Information System looks like. Now the first step is to select the source type. So I'm going to select a website to start off with our first source being a website. Now over here it says author how many, so I'm going to answer that there's one author. And then I'm going to put this information in here, his first and last name. The first source I'm going to use is from the Canadian Encyclopedia by the author Eli Yahi. So now I've put in the author's name, last name first, last name here, Yahi, comma, first name, Eli. Now I'm going to go down to title. I am citing, what am I citing? An article or page within a website is what I'm going to choose here. And now the title source of the article. Now I'm going to go back and take a look at my article here, which is MS ST period Lewis. So I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to type that in here. MS Check it again. MS is correct. ST Lewis. Okay, then the container, the title of the website. Okay, the title of the website is The Canadian Encyclopedia. So I'll type that here. The Canadian Encyclopedia. Now the publisher can often be found at the bottom of a website. Here we can see the Canadian Encyclopedia is actually the publisher of the Canadian Encyclopedia. Other places may have a different name. For example, Wikipedia, the publisher would be Wikimedia instead of Wikipedia. So now you can see I've added the publisher here uh, in this spot over there uh, called the Canadian Encyclopedia. Now it asks me a question. Could you determine the date that the website was created, published, or created? Okay, yes I can. All right, now we have to go back and find the date of that article. September 14, 2015. September 14, 2015. The date was 14. The month was uh, September. Where are you, September? And the date was, what was the date? Now we can always go back and check if we forget the date. 15, 2015. 14 and 15. Day is 14. Year is 2015. So that's a fast way to do that. Now it says create citation below. Oh, a location. You, oh, I forgot almost this location. Web address. All right. So I need to grab, go back here. Find the URL. Copy that. Control C for copy. Come back here and I'm going to do Control V to paste that in. Create citation below. And let's see what we've got down here. Now we've got two different versions. The one where I forgot the URL and the one with the URL. Okay, so. Okay, now I'm going to go hit this copy citation button. And then I'm going to minimize this for a minute. Go back to my work site. And I'm going to click on this button right here just to see my markers. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put in my first source there. Now, I don't want this one without the right information. Now, something is wrong here that I know about, but we're going to come back and fix the formatting after I get a few more sources. Now, I've added a source from our textbook or an older textbook, Cranny, Michael, William, Crossroads, A Meeting of Nations, Prentice Hall. So what we've got here is we've got the author's name here, last name followed by the first name, and perhaps a middle name if needed. Crossroads, A Meeting of the Nations is the title in italics. And then we've got the publisher. And it's zoomed in right now. So I'm going to have to zoom out here under View. And I'm going to go to Zoom 100% so you can see what it looks like zoomed out. Now this is not yet done. 1998 is the date. Now let's say I really want to impress my teacher by finding an academic source in an academic journal. And I wanted to have a higher level of reading, which is going to be found in an academic journal and challenge myself to read hard. I might go to something like Surrey Schools 1. Now let's say if I really want to challenge, uh, I'm going to try and pick something hard. Now if I want to pick something hard, I might go 
even a grade level above my grade. Or maybe I don't want something so hard. But we're going to go to Digital Resources here. And then we're at Digital Resources. We're going to go to, okay, say you're in grade 10, but you want to go up a level. Let's go to grade 11, grade 12, and see what's harder here. Now, you don't have to go harder, but these are some things that are going to be more academic. You've got a Besco host here, which, and then you've got here <clears throat> Gale. Now, uh, Gale in Context. Let's grab Gale in Context as an example, and we're going to visit the website there. And it's going to take a moment to load. Now, we'll put in our search here, and let's say I want to find something. Okay, for this purpose, let's say I'm putting in a bunch of words together like Canadian, Democracy, Revolution, Sovereignty, First Nations, and I'm going to click Search to see what comes up. After I've started my search, I want to look through the filters here and I want to get to academic journals because I, I want to find a really hard reading academic journal. Now, it shows that I found 2,463 academic journals. And so I'm going to browse through here and find one that uh, might be fitting. And I might be consider which journal it is while I'm looking at it and what specifically it is. Is it peer-reviewed, etc. So say I'm really actually looking at the leaders of Canada and how um, they were related to change and World War II or World War I. And I found this article, The Canadian Passive Revolution from 1840 to 1950. And I'm like, okay, World War II might be in that timeline. I might find something near the end of this article that relates to what I'm interested in. I might use this. Now, the key thing I want to show you here is content level. Five. Whoa. So this is going to be a very, very hard intellectual academic read. Now, you may try reading this article and go, whoa, I think I'll go a notch easier. That's okay. This isn't for everybody. But if you want to have an academic uh, article as part of your research, this is the method to find an academic article. All right. So where do you start? Surrey Schools 1, Digital Resources. So again, I'm using Surrey Schools Library. Um, here we've got one author, Ian McKay, but we put the last name first, McKay Ian. Journal article, The Canadian Passive Revolution, 1840 to 1950, Capital and Glass, volume number 34, number three, month October, year 2010. Yes, it was in a library database, found it from Galen Context, and create citation. After we've done that, we'll copy and paste that into... Now, I've pasted these three sources into our Microsoft Word document. Now, we're nowhere near done yet because the formatting is all wrong and they're not in the right order. So they should be in alphabetical order. But let's fix the formatting first. And let's go check with our handy instructions to see what we need to do. Okay, on our handy instructions, we've played around with the Oregon School Library Citation Maker. In step three, read the following instructions. Create a good copy of your bibliography typed up on a separate single piece of paper in Microsoft Word. Staple this cover when it is complete. Oh, yeah. One bonus tip I just remembered I really wanted to show you with the best co-host, this one here. Uh, there's a nice feature here where, say, uh, with this article, Mackenzie King Complaints, I could push this Single button out and right credit here. Canadian, Canadian forces, forces when credit, credit was, due. was due. Canada. Canada. Okay, so there's some potential to play with that. Oh. Also, if you're using Teams, with your teacher, and you have your assignment and instructions in Teams, you can click on Immersive Reader to get the instructions read to you. Now, let's say if I wanted to scroll down here to where we left off, I think we were on step three. Here we go. Create a good Create copy a good of your copy bibliography, of bibliography typed up on a single piece, piece of paper, paper in Microsoft, Microsoft Word. Word. Staple to this Staple. cover when it is complete. 
One, on a separate piece of paper typed up in a Word document and printed. Two, set margins to normal or about one inch or 2.5 centimeters. Three, use the title, works cited, center the title with no bold, no underline or size changes. Four, if you paste into Microsoft Word from another website, one, right click past to select the best choice regarding formatting or two, highlight and control spacebar to remove the wrong formatting. Five, format font, use the font, times any W Roman 12 point font after instruction four. Six, format the body with a hanging indent of 0.5 inches or 1.5 centimeters. Seven, double space the body text exactly and format paragraph before and after equals zero. Eight, each entry should be entered in alphabetical order. Nine, include all the information in the correct MLA order as seen in the table and examples, author, date, tittle, URL, etc., and in the UBC PDF. Ten, ten, if needed right click on hyperlinks and remove hyperlink formatting. Use these tables to help make bibliography notes. Websites. Author last name, first name, or if no author then leave blank. Title of article. In quotes. If available. Title of website slash. Web page. In italics. If available. Publisher. If available. NP for no publisher. Date published. May 15, 2018. ND for no date. Web. Followed by the date of access is no longer needed in version 8. URL is now needed for MLA version 8. Okay, so you can see the power of eating a snack while you get uh, Immersive Reader to read you the instructions. Now let's exit Immersive Reader and see where we left off with the Immersive Reader. It was actually reading us this table here to show you how to do a website. And you can see that it mentioned that uh, some things are not needed in MLA 8 that were needed in MLA 7. And now the URL is now needed for MLA 8, which it was not needed in MLA 7. For books, for example, there's also been a change. Author, last name, first name, title of book in italics. City, province, city, state is no longer needed in MLA 8 with the exception of a very, 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 very old book, publisher, year of published, followed by a period. So there you have an example table here of how to put the things in the correct order. That's the purpose of looking at these tables. So we can see these instructions here. We need to check our margins. We need, we've centered the title already. And we may have to check some other formatting. We've done the Times New Roman font to 12 point font. And we're going to have to work on the hanging indent and the double space and the alphabetical. So this is the table we were just talking about. The websites are here. Books are here. And so some of the changes. Well, web followed by the date of access is no longer needed in version 8, MLA 8. But the URL is now needed for MLA version 8. Also for books, the city and province is no longer needed in MLA. That's a change, but you still need the last name, first name, first name of the author, the title of the book, publisher, and the year of publish. Okay, let's take a look at our steps here. Set our margins to normal. We'll need to check that. Use the title works cited. Check. We've done that. If you paste into Microsoft, which we have done, we're going to have to fix some errors. We'll have to check that. Use the font. Times New Roman, check, we've done that. 12 point font, check, we've done that. Format the body text with hanging indent. Okay, we'll have to check that and double space, we'll have to check that. All right, so let's go check our mistakes. Okay, let's start with the double spacing. We're going to select it all because everything has to be double spaced. Now that we've selected it all, we will go to home, paragraph, arrow to open up this. And we'll just do the line spacing right off the bat. Make sure the line spa double spacing is correct. Now I think I'm going to go full screen on this now and go zoom in a little bit further 
to show you a better uh, zoom level. And we'll knock that up to about, let's go 125%. So it's just a little easier to see. And now you can see it's just a little bit easier for you to see, even though it's going to be small on your screen. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the body text. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just had an announcement on the PA, but now I'm going back to selecting the body text here, and we are going to go to home, down arrow. And now that we've just got the body text, we're going to add the hanging indent here. And we want that at 1.5 centimeters. If we're in metric, we're going to make sure all these numbers are 0, 0, 0, and 0 over there, and it's still at double spacing. Okay, let's check that to see if it fixes everything. It looks like it's all fixed except this one is not quite in alignment. So we're going to go here and select it all again. And oops, we lost our selection. We will select it all again. Down arrow. And we can see that this arrow isn't right. And let's go with left aligned. And now we should have it all fixed. So you can see that it wasn't quite perfectly accurate, but now something's gone wrong with our margin. So we've got to figure out what went wrong there. Okay, so we're going to open up this again, go hanging, 1.5, go OK, and that fixed it. So sometimes things you just have to keep trying over and over again to get them correct. So what we want is this all lined up nicely. And we want to have a hanging indent here, and here you can see. And what we kept doing is we kept going here to make sure this was correct left, 0, 0, 0, 0, hanging, 1.5, double spaced. And if something went wrong, we went back and fixed it again and again until we got it correct. Now that it's correct, there's still the error of alphabetical order. So Y here should be at the end, so I'll go Control X. Put that down at the bottom. Now we've got C, M, Y. It's now in alphabetical order. We have a book that happens to be at the top. We have um, also a website, the Canadian Encyclopedia, and an academic um, article from a journal. There we go. Now if your teacher would like you to have your name on the right corner, you click this button here and it sends it to the right-hand corner. And if your teacher wants you to have your name and date on the left hand corner you click there to put it on the left. Uh, different uh, teachers will request right or left for your name. Either one is probably acceptable. The key thing is to remember that you do have your name on your work and that it should be at the top above your title. A common thing I find with younger students is when they're dealing with their own title, instead of using this button here to center it, when they have it on the left, they'll go over here and go space, 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 or tab, space, tab, space. Now they may not have those characters here, which is this button, and they're moving it across that way. Well, it's easier to hit the center button. It gets it right to the exact center of your document and it looks really sharp to have it right in the center and it's also faster and saves your time to get it correct that way. Now we should double check our italics. Uh, we have italics here for the title of the book. We've got italics here for uh, the title of the website and the article here has got quotations around it and here quotations around the article and italics for the, um, the name of the journal here. All right, now let's go double check our instructions to see if we've missed anything on our instructions. All right, we got to double space the body text. We got to number eight. Entry should be in alphabetical order. We got things in the correct order. And we can double check our order here on these charts. And then we've got a little extra information at the bottom of our instructions. Important note, save all your electronic work in two locations, hard drive, flash drive, Google Drive, and email yourself a copy. Otherwise, you may need to redo your work. It's good to save your work in multiple locations. Important note, ask your teacher about the quantity and variety of sources. A common minimum is two to three websites and one to two physical books. Some teachers may want more than that. And note, a minimum is not necessarily the maximum. So you may want to ask your teacher what is the minimum 
and what is the maximum, if there is a maximum, and maybe there is no maximum. Don't confuse the minimum with the maximum. Examples for MLA 8, website, followed by a book, and followed by a website. Okay, let's see what's down here. We've got another example here. And then down here, we have a possible rubric. Now this is just a guideline to give you an idea of what you need to do to try to get to the level that you're trying to achieve. So for example, if you have many mistakes with at least two websites and one book, according to this rubric, you might be a level three or four. Now, this is just a guideline to help you. This may not apply to your class, to your situation, to your grade level, but this is just a general guideline to try and get to the level you want. Say you're trying to aim for a level five, maybe you only want two mistakes with at least two websites and one physical book. And again, that's a minimum, not a maximum. So you're trying to get to level six, only one mistake with at least three websites and two physical books. Now say you're trying to get to the elusive, challenging level seven, perfect MLA eight style, and follow all of the teacher's instructions with at least three websites and two books. Some teachers may require more quantity and variety at this level, including an academic search journal and or a newspaper source or magazine source. All right, so there you have Bibliography MLA 8 style works cited instructions. This is the website that, or sorry, the works cited that we've been creating today. Now we forgot one critical step. We have name, October, block, grade, title, but we've not saved it yet. So don't forget to save your work in the, along the way. Save as. Now what should we save it as? We'll save it as this PZ, PC. We'll save it under projected. And we're going to put our file name here. We'll call it something like work cited project. But we should put in our name. This is done by Lisa. Simpson. We want to make sure we have our name. Maybe we also want to have block E, if we're block E, if there is such a thing. Okay, now we got our project saved. Save that. Work. Save your work. Save your work. Don't forget to save your work. And sometimes people save it as my project. That's a bit vague. It's harder to find what you're looking for if you save your work as my project. Bear that in mind when you're saving your work. And just to review some of our tips for the day, just before we go, we've got to recommend S Besco Host. We've got to recommend Gale in context. What else did we use? Um, this is an Besco Host of an article. And the thing I wanted to make sure I remember to recommend is Surrey, Surrey Schools 1. Surrey Schools 1. Type it into Google, click there, you'll find Surrey Schools 1, one place for all of your resources, and then you can go, I'm a student, and follow it to your digital sources. Don't forget to explore Surrey Schools 1 and to see all that there is for available for you there. And also, if you are needing to go online to do your work online, you can go to Microsoft Office Online if you're, say, working at home. And you would find Microsoft Office right here on Microsoft uh, Online. And if you're using one place, Surrey Schools One at home, it will give you a solution to how to log into the various uh, databases. I'm not going to go through that here because I want to keep the passwords and usernames private. But if you need that information, you can find that here. And the last reminder is today we used Oregon School Library Information System Citation Maker to help us with our citation making. This system is uh, generally uh, advertisement free. It's published by a educational body, so it's very useful and it's done to be easy for uh, students to use. If you have any questions, don't forget you can send me an email or send me a message in Teams chat. Have a good night.